Okay. So if you see me looking up and down on this live, that's because I'm on several different platforms because I wanted to show her, basically share my story um, with as many people as possible. When God says, you know what, you need to just share your story to as many people as possible. That's what you're going to do. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm on Facebook and I'm on TikTok as well. And good morning. Good morning. So I just wanted to come on here real quick about limiting beliefs and to basically share my story. Um, if you got my degree um, from the University of Central Florida, got my bachelor's from graduating college and things like that, that your limiting beliefs can be a detriment to your life, right? We have, um, I would fam you. And I majored in nursing because it was my safe route. I went to nursing. Even though I knew my gifts were art, like even when I was younger, I used to draw all the time. And I mean, I drew all the time. I drew in church. I would draw people's, basically the back of their heads. I would draw at the house. I would draw everywhere I went, you know, because that was my passion. And so when I graduated high school, um, I basically had the idea of maybe I need to go into nursing because I was always taught that there wasn't a lot of money into art. So I didn't go into art and I knew back then I should have followed my heart. Um, but I went the safe route because I was scared. I didn't know that there was possibilities for money in art. I just knew I liked art, but I didn't really know what I could do with it. So I went the safe route and went to nursing because that was the safe route. Needless to say, I went there a few years and of course I failed at it because that wasn't my passion. I did it because it was safe. I knew I would make a lot of money from it, but that was not my purpose in life was to be in nursing. And I failed tremendously at it. So needless to say, um, went to different routes. I was a CNA for a little bit. And then I went back to school and became a teacher. Started off as a VPK teacher, taught that for a couple of years. And then I went back and got my bachelor's degree in education and became a teacher. Once again, I did it because it was safe, not because I had a passion for teaching, but because I knew it had benefits. I knew I could make some money from it and I knew I got some summers off. So I said, yeah, I'll, 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 do, I'll do teaching. It's a safe route. But sometimes you have to basically listen to your heart and think about what your passions are in life. If you know good and well your passion is not teaching, don't go into teaching because it's not for everybody, especially if you have children, especially if you have a family, because as in education, it will consume you, especially if you have that heart where you want to help everybody. It will tear you down both physically and emotionally. And that is what was happening to me year after year after year. I found myself going from one school to another school to another school thinking and praying that maybe it was just a school. Maybe maybe I was just in the wrong school. But when you realize it, realize that it's happening year after year after year, that it's not the school. It's you. And I had to learn the hard way. And this is why I'm sharing with you guys today. So hopefully and praying that something that I say today kind of registers with somebody. So if you're considering an, an, a job, a career, I want you to think about, is this something that you're passionate about? Don't think about the money because I can tell you from experience, I thought about the money, I thought about the benefits and I went for it because of the money. Um, and so this last year, I was offered more than I've ever made in teaching. And of course, I accepted it because of the money. Um, but then I realized that after that year, that money, even though it sounded great, um, even though it had great benefits, it was tearing me down physically and emotionally. I would wake up every morning throwing up because I didn't want to go to work. And I thought, okay, maybe there's something physically wrong with me. Maybe I have a, a GI problem. Um, because every morning before I would go to work, it was like clockwork. I would throw up and I realized that it was stress. It had nothing to do with anything. 
physical. It was just stress. I did not want to be there. And God would tell you, it will show you these signs that, you know, this career path is not for you. But me being me stubborn and me being a Taurus, I was not listening to it because I was thinking, OK, I got to do this because that mindset is not the situation that you're going through. It's your mindset. I'm thinking, OK, if I have to go through all this, because if I don't go through all this, then my family can't eat. If I don't fulfill this life. People will think I'm not successful. People will think I'm lazy. If I give up now, um, I was thinking that, oh my gosh, this is another, another year that you're, you're not being a teacher. You're going from one job to another. So all these limiting beliefs are going on in my head. And all that buildup is what was causing me to be physically sick. So that's why I wanted to share with you about your limiting beliefs. Um, because your limiting beliefs will literally tear you down both physically and emotionally. And you need to listen to your body. When your body tells you, hey, this is not the right path for you, you need to listen to it because it's telling you this for a reason. And so long story short, um, about it's been about a month. I decided because of the stress, because of the cycle of things that were going on in my life, that I had to leave the teaching profession. Even though I've had experience with teaching and I've been teaching for 15 years, I realized in my heart and my spirit that I had to let it go. I had to take the leap of faith and just let it go because it just wasn't the right path for me. Um, so if you are considering being a teacher, I want you to consider this. Because it could be for somebody, you know, teaching is, is the right path. If you have a family, just keep in mind that it will consume you. You will find yourself working more hours than none teaching. Um, and that's another reason why I had to stop teaching because it was consuming me. Um, I found myself wanting to help my students more than my own family. I was losing the sight of my family because I was spending 50, 60 hours teaching these kids because I'm, I'm a perfectionist, right? So I wanted to make sure that what I'm teaching these kids, um, they're going to get something out of. And when you're one of those people that like to help people, that's what you find yourself doing. You want to spend all these hours trying to make sure your lesson plans are where they need to be. You want to make sure that you're practicing, you know, the teaching and things like that. Um, and so that's what was basically taking over my life. And when you're teaching, you're teaching, you know, all this time. And then when you come home, you're tired. You neglect your family because I don't know about you, but I would wake up at 530 in the morning to obviously get dressed because I was working probably 40 minutes away from my house. Um, then Obviously, I had to get ready, get dressed, and then be there by 730. And then I wouldn't get home until after probably about 5, 530 or 6. And then when I came home, like a cycle, I had to make dinner. I had to make sure the kids are bathed and they're, you know, ready for school. And it was a cycle. And I would do it over again and again and again and again. Yeah, like, yeah, from, you said 5 a.m., got home at 7, exactly. So, yeah, when you teach, you, you work those long hours. And when you work those long hours, you lose sight of yourself because you're tired, you're exhausted. And then I felt myself, like, feeling bad because I don't, I didn't have the energy to play with my kids because I was just so tired after, you know, having to teach these young kids. And I taught second grade, I've taught kindergarten, I've taught first, so... Having to do that every day, nine to five, and then coming home and having to spend time with your family, it was exhausting. And that's why I had to give it up. I said, yeah, the money was great. I made, you know, my last year, I made as most, you know, the most I've ever made teaching ever. Um, but with more money, we know that's more responsibilities. Don't think just because you're going to make more money, you're not going to have, you know, the same responsibilities. They're going to be in your classroom 
more hours. They're going to be in your classroom and critiquing you more often. And of course, the school that I was working with, they had a whole team coming in and making sure I was doing what I got to do. So think about all that stress that, you know, you have to go through. So needless to say, I gave up teaching and I took the leap of faith and said, you know what, I'm going to do what I am passionate about. I'm going to do something that I know that I'm going to love. Yeah, the paperwork is is crazy. You're right. Um, and I knew back in the day, um, I love art and things like that. But of course, I didn't know what I could do with it. So I, I knew that I love real estate. I knew that I love design. And so even when I'm like watching TV and things like that, I don't watch I don't watch the news. I don't watch anything. But all I watch is like real estate, home improvement shows, um, flipping houses, interior design. That is all I look at. And God was basically saying, you need to, you know, look into something like that, something that you're passionate about. And I'm not saying that every job is going to be perfect. But if you're passionate about something, it makes it so much easier and less stressful. So I say that all to say that, yeah, I love art. So I say that all to say that do what you're passionate about. Yes, you need to make that money, but might as well do what makes you happy because the money, if you're stressed out, is not worth it. If you're losing time with your family, you're losing yourself, you're getting physically, emotionally sick, you're constantly going from one job to another, it's not worth it. Do what makes you happy. And I realized that it wasn't going to work because of my limiting beliefs. My first limiting belief was when I was in college that I can't make money in art. And once I was told that, I stopped doing my art because I was told that, you know, can't make any money with art. So I just stopped. And it started from there. I didn't realize it at the time, but of course, 20 years later, it just came to me. I was like, that is why I have been going from one job to the other. I was in the wrong jobs. I should have followed my heart and went into what I was passionate about. And my passion was has always been art. And so now what I'm doing, um, because I know my passion is art, is I'm studying to be a real estate agent. It is very time consuming and big ups to anybody that is in real estate because I had no idea. I had no idea that you had to study this much for real estate. I thought, okay, you were just selling houses and, you know, you know, a couple of laws and things like that. No, there are 20 sections and I mean, 20 sections that you have to go over to be a real estate agent. And it takes some time, some time. Mm hmm. Yeah, the starving artist is no joke. And a lot of times with artists, it's hard to find something that, you know, you have this gift of art, right? But the problem is, even though you have this gift in art, you have to figure out a way you can make money from it. Because not a lot of people, you know, will buy your stuff. So you got to kind of realize, you know, what you can do with that. But any anyway... Right now, I'm studying to be a real estate agent because the reason why I want to be a real estate agent is because everything has steps. My whole goal in life is, from watching all these shows and just my thoughts, is to basically own my own firm. If you've never heard of Egypt Sherrod or um, a lot of the interior design um, HGTV type of people, they are basically my mentors. That is what I want to do. I want to own a firm where I am not only a real estate agent, I'm also a designer. So not only do I want to be able to help people find homes, and the reason why I want to help people find homes is because I myself have never, ever, ever, ever owned a home. And so when I started a real estate journey, it was more of, I wanted to learn what it takes to own a home because I was really never taught, okay, what are the steps to buying a home? Even after, and I'll tell you, I'm 40 years old. I did not know the steps of buying a home. What 
are the criteria. So when I went into real estate, I wanted to know basically what can I do to be a home buyer? And when I got into it, I realized that my passion is to help as many people as possible own a home. Um, because I looked at the statistics. I'm a real big statistics fan. Only 40% of African Americans are home buyers. And I think only um, 20% are Hispanic, which is really, really sad. Um, and all of that, as far as real estate agents in the state of Florida, which is where I live, only 7% of real estate agents are African American. Mm hmm. 7%. And when I saw that, I was like, what? First, I want to know why. Why is only a, a small amount of African-Americans real estate agents? And two, why is only 40% of African-Americans home buyers? Um, I know for me, um, I know why I'm not a home buyer. And that's because I was never taught the steps of being a home buyer. I didn't know. And then you got to have, you know, the credit. To do it, you got to have obviously a job to do it, to have, you know, property. And then I found out later that a lot of people that do buy homes, they're not first time home buyers. Only 33%, I'm telling you this again, only 33% of all the home buyers are first time home buyers. That means roughly about 67% are not first time home buyers. So I was like, who in the world is buying all these houses? It's investors. It's the people that have been taught years after years. It could have been, you know, a, a, a generational thing where their parents may have taught them, hey, you need to buy this house so you can flip it and make this money. So you got 67% of these people that are investors that are just buying homes, not one, but two homes to make money for it. Not people that are like me that just want to have a house for themselves. Oh, thank you, Trix. But yeah, my whole thing about the real estate, I can care less about the money. If it was about money, I would still be teaching and still be stressed. I want to help as many people as possible. And I think a lot of times um, real estate agents, they're not successful because their mindset is is wrong. They want to just make money. For me, I could care less about the money. My thing is, how many people can I help buy a home? Because I have never bought a home. So if I can help one person buy a house from the knowledge that I'm learning from real estate, I, that I've done my purpose. Hey, Cole. I'm just talking about, you know, m your mindset. So, yeah. Um, hold on one second. Oh, thank you. So, as I continue, like, um, my whole goal in life, like I said, is to own my own firm. And, of course, that takes, that takes money. That takes knowledge. And so... Um, day after day, as soon as I finish this live, I got to go back to, um, you know, learning about this exam because the exam is a beast. It's a hundred question exam over 20 sections of real estate. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is the most boring class I have ever taken. It's interesting in parts and I'm learning a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm learning a lot just about being a home buyer and the different steps of, of law. And I learned the other day about all these different laws back in the day where real estate agents were just selling African-Americans and people of color houses, knowing good well they couldn't live in them. And when I heard about that law back in the day um, where they were just selling people's houses, there was a civil rights leader um, that was buying a house or bought a house. I think it's called Brown versus, um, I'll look it up, but I think it's Brown versus something. But it was basically a civil rights leader that bought a house in a community. And this was like in the 70s. Um, 
and he didn't pay the real estate agent. He didn't pay the real estate agent because he couldn't live in there. Because back in the day when you were African American, there were some certain neighborhoods you couldn't live in because of your skin color, unfortunately. And so he bought this house and this real estate agent didn't um, go to court because of the situation of him not going there. He went to court because he didn't get his money. The civil rights leader didn't pay him because obviously he couldn't stay in the house. He he bought the house, right? But he couldn't physically you know, stay there. And so because of that, we have now the Fair Housing Act where people that of color can now live in houses. Um, and even, you know, today they have areas where your the market value will go down because of the color of your skin. And I was like, are you serious? And I'm so proud that we've come such a long way that we don't have as many issues as we did back in the you know, back in the day. But when I heard about all this, you know, you know, gentrification and where, you know, certain people of color couldn't live in certain areas and basically the real estate industry was um, downgrading the neighborhood because of their color. Like, what? Like, your property value back in the day would literally go down if you lived in a certain area and that certain area unfortunately was areas with people of color so the people that were living in all white neighborhoods their property values were going up and so they were basically stopping anybody that wanted to go into the african americans don't go there because their property values are going down and vice versa if you were an African American, you couldn't stay where the white um, people were because if you did, their property value would go down. And the neighbors and things like that, they would complain, hey, you can't have these people living in our neighborhood because our property value was going down. So you have all these African Americans, Hispanics, people that are of color that were being denied this and were being denied, even though they had the money. Um, this property because of the color of the skin. And when I heard this, I knew it was a sign that I wanted to get my license to be a real estate agent so I can make a change. And the fact that only 40% of African Americans um, own a home, I knew, you know what? I have to finish this. No matter how hard it is, no matter how boring it may be, I'm going to finish this so that I can help as many people as possible. I'm going to learn as much as I can about real estate so that I could be a blessing to somebody else. I can care less if I buy a home, I'll stay renting, I guess. But if I can sell people houses so that they could have a house for themselves, I would do that. And so besides being a real estate agent, I also want to be interior design, a basically interior designer. So be able to not only sell them the house, but make their house feel like a home. I want to be able to design their living room, their their kitchen, their bedrooms, and be able to stage it. I want to be, you know, best of both worlds. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all, you know, um, all the way. And that's why I want to own my own firm. I want to not only sell houses, but I want to be able to design houses. And like I said, if you've never heard of Egypt Sherrod, Check her out. Check her out. She's on Instagram. She's on Facebook and check her out. She is amazing. I love her style as far as interior design. And she's very motivational um, in her story. Yeah, that's my goal. Satin is, yeah, to have the most dream homes. Oh, thank you, Trix. But yeah, I just, I've like I said, even when I was a, a young girl, I've always wanted to help people. I just didn't know um, as far as jobs, what I could do with it. And that's why I was saying, like, I went into nursing because I wanted to help people. Knowing good, well, that's not my gift. I don't even like needles. So the fact that I went into nursing now that I, you know, in my 40s, I'm 40 years old, was the most dumbest thing I could have ever thought. I was like, I'll go into nursing because I like helping people. But I was naive. I was 18 years old and I took the safe route. And I was like, yeah, I'll go 
going to nursing. They make good money. They help people. And, of course, those limiting beliefs that, hey, you can't make money in art made it seem like a good idea. So, I have a homework assignment for you guys as well. I want you to think about the career that you're in now, your situation that you are in now, because I know for me it was like a cycle. Um, those limiting beliefs was the things that was tearing me down day after day. My first limiting beliefs was can't make money in art. So shut everything down as far as art. Number two, my limiting be beliefs as far as um, people. I, growing up, was very shy. I didn't talk to nobody. Nobody. And not because I was snobbish and didn't like people. It was because of my own limiting beliefs. My limiting belief was if I talk to somebody, I'm going to say something really stupid. And they're going to think I'm stupid. So let's not talk to anybody at all and I also have a stuttering problem it's not as bad as it used to be because I've kind of grown out of it but back in the day I used to stutter quite a bit but I had to I learned how to control it I had to think about the words that I had to say um before I said it and that was another reason why I didn't like talking to people because I was scared that I would stutter and people would think I was stupid yeah, believe it or not, I was an introvert. I didn't like talking to people. And even in high school, I didn't talk to anybody. I was I always had friends because people were just drawn to me for some reason. But I never talked to pe people. I never started a conversation. People would always come to me. Um, but yeah, I never talked to anybody. Yeah, you were the same way? Yeah. So yeah, I that was another limiting belief. Didn't want to talk because people think I stuck, you know, people thought I was stupid, had a stuttering issue. But as soon as I realized that, hey, I'm actually quite intelligent. And hey, yeah, I may have stutter, but a lot of people have speech impediments. But I'm not going to let that stop me. Um, it's all about your mindset. Yes. There's a program that you'll need to learn if you want to design Cool, cool, cool. Put it in the link, um, Angie. I'd love to learn more about it. But yeah, that was another um, limiting belief was, you know, didn't want to talk to people because I didn't want to be the person feel stupid. Another limiting belief, I'm ugly. I have a big nose. My, my, my nose might be big, but there's a lot of people with, you know, big noses. But does that make them ugly? Absolutely not. And so when you have all these limiting beliefs, it really, really tears you down, like um, physically and emotionally. And so that was, was happening and I was having anxiety and I was having depression and I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was basically isolating myself to the point I had to talk to somebody. I was like, and, you know, um, in our community, going to see a counselor was kind of forbidden because it's like, why are you going to go to a counselor? You just pray about it. You'll be all right. I, I, I never went to a counselor. But um, talking with my counselor, I realized that, yeah, when you isolate yourself and when you have that anxiety and depression, a lot of times it's all about your mental. And so what she had me do was um, write some things down that were positive that was happening in my life, um, write down some things about my beliefs. And that has helped me tremendously. That's given me the confidence um, to talk to you because... Before, about, you know, 30 some years ago, I wouldn't have talked to people. I wouldn't have been on live. Not, not at all. So that, that is your homework assignment today. I'm going to give you guys a homework assignment. Think about what your limiting beliefs are. I know mine was can't make money in art. Not going to talk to anybody because I'm, I have that fear of, of saying something stupid. I'm ugly. Whatever your limiting beliefs is, I want you to write it down. You could also have limiting beliefs about relationships. You can have limiting beliefs about money. You can have limiting beliefs about family. And that was another thing with money. I never thought I had a you know limiting belief about money until I had to really self-reflect about why I was spending money as much as I was. And unfortunately, in our community, especially the African-American community, we want to spend money 
so that people think we have a lot of money. Like we will show Gucci, we will show Versace, we will buy all this expensive stuff just so that we would feel good. It has nothing to do about you being rich. Matter of fact, a lot of people that show all that kind of stuff are broke. And the reason why they were broke, because they're using their money in the wrong ways. Instead of investing in this Gucci and Versace, they're not investing and putting it back so that they can make more money. Not saying a little bit of, you know, coach and everything every once in a while is bad. But when you're constantly, you know, buying all this stuff over and over again, not because of yourself, because you want to brag that you have all this stuff. It's actually a limiting belief, believe it or not. It's basically saying that, hey, if I don't have this, people will think I'm broke. If I don't have this Gucci, if I don't have this Versace, if I don't have this coach, people will eventually realize that I don't have a lot of money. So I'm going to buy this stuff, even though I will be broke, even though my kids don't have food on the table, even though I don't know how I'm going to pay my bill, I'm going to buy this. So people will just know or think that I have money. And you'll notice a lot of rich people, like Oprah Winfrey, they don't they don't brag about buying Gucci and Versace. If you never read the book, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, please read that book by Robert Kawasaki. It will change your life. It will basically it basically think, tells you about the mindset of a rich man and a poor man. Poor man will buy all this stuff. That has no value whatsoever, whereas a rich man will buy something that will present value. A lot of times people think that a house is an asset. It actually is not. If you're having to pay somebody for this house for 30 some years, that's not an asset because it's not giving you any money. Now, if you were to purchase a house and that house was making you money, then therefore that was an asset. A house, if you're constantly paying it every month, that's actually a liability. And so that's a lot of times we get those things wrong. Yeah, it's a good book, isn't it? So yeah, like Rich Man, Poor Dad. If you never read that book, please read it. Because it, it made so much sense. Like a poor man will say, hey, you got to go to college. You got you to gotta work this nine to five job so you can have the benefits um, not saying that college is bad for the right people. Um, but college, I will say this right up. College is not for everybody. And my 16 year old son asked me the other day, are you going to force me to go to college? I said, absolutely not. I'd rather you figure out what you want to do before I force you to go to college because college is not for everybody. First of all, when you go to college, you're going to have to pay for it. And if you have to get student loans, you're going to have to pay that back. And if you don't pay that back and you don't have money to pay it back, now you have debt. Right? So, no, I'm not going to force you to go to college. There's um, career paths out there that you don't need a college degree. There's a lot of entrepreneurship where you don't need to go to college. A lot of billionaires have never been to college. So why would I force somebody to go to college when you don't really have to? It just depends on what you want to do in life. What are your goals are? And I told him, like, look, if I were you, I would first figure out what you want to do. Research the people that are successful in that career and figure out what they're doing to be successful. First, did they go to college to be successful? What are their plans? What are their goals? What did they do to become successful? And you might find out that, hey, they didn't have to go to college. It was all about who they know. It was all about maybe getting certifications because a lot of certifications, you're not actually going to college. You may have to pay a little bit to get that you know, certificate or maybe going to trade school, but you don't have to physically go to college because college is expensive. And if you don't know what you want to do, like I was an 18 year old and I just went to FAMU, I was, that was just a waste of money. So, yeah, it may seem bad as a mom to say, no, I'm not going to force you to go to college. But I'm thinking as the long run, if it doesn't make sense for that child, 
I'm not going to force them to go to college. Now, if you get a full ride, full ride scholarship because you're brilliant and you're smart and you have and that college is paid for. Absolutely. Go to college. But if you have to come out of your pocket to go to the school and you don't know what you want to do, mm -mm. I'm not going to force you to do that. Absolutely not. But um, another thing I wanted to talk about, too, is, yeah, it is a great book, right? Is my energy. So I've been taking this pill, these three pills, and it has absolutely changed my life, y'all. And I'm not like one of those type of people that likes to take um, a lot of supplements. But hey, I had to, I had to try it. So here's the thing. Before I was taking coffee, and it's kind of crazy because when I was growing up, it's like, oh, my mama drinks coffee. When I was younger, I was like, my mom was always drinking coffee, but she was a teacher. She taught for 20 some years and was a principal. Um, and teaching, I, I understood why she drank coffee because she was tired. But I basically said, you know what? I'm going to stop with this coffee because. Basically, the coffee I was drinking was giving me jitters and giving me chest pain. And so I went to the doctor and he said, yeah, the caffeine from coffee will make you sick. And then that could have been like also two of the things I was throwing up before um, every morning. A lot of gastric stuff. It's like it could have been a coffee. So I made a decision to stop drinking coffee and just do a natural approach of, you know what, not drinking the coffee. And so now I'm just doing three pills a day and it is called the three day epic experience and these pills have saved my life and i'm gonna tell you why as a mother you need to get these pills because the first pill is a green pill right and i'm gonna tell you some of the things that it has in it it has spinach it has broccoli carrot tomatoes beet um shiitake mushrooms apple cranberry cherry orange blueberry strawberry and i'm telling you right now i'm gonna be the first one to admit I did not eat fruit and vegetables. I know it's bad, right? I didn't eat fruit and vegetables. But this right here, best thing ever. It has, not only does it have all the vitamins you need, it has the fruits, it has the vegetables, and it's natural and it gives you all of the energy you need. And besides that, not only will it give you energy, the other two pills is a restore and then a sleep. So the first one, the green pill, will give you the energy. The other two, um, one is a pro, um, probio probiotic. The other one is a sleeping pill. So if you have any trouble sleeping, which I did, because um, as an artist and an art, you know, artistic person, my mind is going like this, just like this. Um, so I can never sleep. So if you are a mom, or even if you are not a mom and just need some energy. Highly recommend the three-day epic experience. And if you want to try it, let me know. Send me a message and I will send and I will send you some. Just send me a message. And I had to share this because this has saved my life. Yesterday, I had so much energy. I have a lot of energy today, too. Yesterday, I had so much energy. I, and I don't do this a lot. In the middle of the day, I cleaned the bathroom, mopped the bathroom, cleaned the toilet. Cleaned the tub, cleaned underneath the sink, then went back into the kitchen and started cleaning that. Cleaned underneath all that, started washing the dishes. I had so much energy. I wanted to walk. I didn't know what to do. And for me to have energy and not have to have a, a drink of coffee, that was huge. Like no other. And I still have energy. Like I'm, I'm still have this energy. Like. I have the energy now to even come alive because I would have never done it before. So, I have 10 of these. Just 10. I may even have, I don't even think I have 10. I have 9 now because I took one of them. But I have 10 of these. If you want one, and I'm telling you, you are. It's going to be your best friend. You're going to have, you're going to want to have a month supply because it's like no other's business. I've never heard of anything like this before and it has given me so much energy and has saved my life. 
I stopped drinking coffee. And besides the energy and being able to sleep, because it will knock you out. Matter of fact, this is how I tell you it will knock you out. It says, accelerate sleep causes drowsiness or sleepiness. Do not take when driving, operating machinery, or engaging in any activity that requires alertness. So it tells you in the package, do not take this, the, the little, and it's the, um, it is the white pill that does it. Don't take that little white pill if you plan on driving because it will knock you out. You would feel so refreshed. And that's why I love it because not only does it give you the energy, it lets you cruise by. It allows you to sleep. And besides that, when I woke up this morning, I had to weigh myself because I was like, I feel lighter. I actually lost two pounds. I was like, what? I kid you not. I was 179 yesterday. The day when I woke up, I was 177. And I'm still at a loss. How in the world is this possible? But I kind of know why. I kind of don't. It's probably because it gives you so much energy that it's causing you to want to do so much. Like I was cleaning the bathroom and I was sweating doing it. It makes you want to go walk. It makes you want to basically do all the things because you have all this energy. I guarantee you, if you take these pills, you will not sit down. And I highly, highly, highly do not recommend you take this with some coffee because you will feel like the Energizer Bunny if you do. Because I had to do an experiment because I was like, I didn't want to take the pills with coffee because I didn't want to have the experience of the coffee and say, okay, maybe it was the coffee that was giving me the energy. I wanted to take the pills on basically a clear stomach, you know, say just water in the pill. Cause I wanted to see if it's if it the pill that gives me this energy or is it the coffee? So yesterday I had no coffee and I felt great. I took it this morning. I feel fabulous. And I slept so good last night. I don't know what happened last night. But I felt good and I felt good this morning. So I had to share this with you. I wouldn't feel right not sharing it with people, uh, especially being um, a mother of three. And I will share this every single day because I'm so passionate about it and it works. And I will tell you right now, when I first, you two tricks. And I'll tell you right now, I did not think it was going to work because I've tried a bunch of stuff before, like as far as energy pills and things like that. It didn't work. It gave me the jitters and I had to stop taking it. This right here does not give you the jitters, but you feel great. You feel like a million bucks. And thank you so much, Trix, for um, joining me today. I really appreciate it. But... Anyways, um, if you're coming on here now, and if, like I said, if you want to try it, send me a message. It's called the Three Day Epic Experience. It comes with three pills. The first pill is a green pill, and the green pill is the one that's going to give you the energy. The white pill is the one that's going to knock you out and make you feel like a million bucks. And then the purple pill is basically the probiotic. It's going to clear out your system. It's going to restore your system. And a lot of times you are not losing the weight because we have all this gunk. We have all this toxins and stuff inside me. And so that purple pill is, is what's going to help you lose the weight. And it helped me lose weight in my sleep, which is crazy because I've tried so many different things and it didn't work. But I tried this for one day and I lost two pounds and I feel great. So I just wanted to share that with you and hopefully that my story about my situation as far as um, my career paths and what I want to do has been a blessing to someone um, in their life. And if it has, please share this. Please share this video. Um, and if you don't follow me already, hit that follow button and I would love to connect with you. Um, so, Send me a message if you want to know some more about it. Oh, thank you for the share. And I just want to um, end this live on a positive note. Um, whatever your lim limiting beliefs are, 
just know that they're not true. It may seem like they are, but they're limiting beliefs. It's just the devil's way of trying to convince you not to be the best person that you can possibly be, right? It's his way of saying that you're on the right path and it and he will make it completely difficult for the, you to finish it because he knows that is what your God-given right and your God-given gift is. So don't listen to any of those limiting beliefs. Follow your heart, follow your passion and be the best person you could possibly be. And God will bless you for it. All right. Hopefully you guys have an amazing morning. I'm going to go back to studying for this real estate so I can be great and I can help as many people as possible. And I just want to thank everyone from joining. If you're catching this on the replay, put replay. If you're on Facebook and follow your girl. All right. You guys have a wonderful morning. And if nobody has told you today, you are beautiful, you are strong, and you can do anything that your mind has set for you. All right. You have a wonderful day. Take care.